Uh, the recent ra radio reports there show that polling uh, for Sinn Féin is a way down. They're on 24%. They're equal to, to Fine Gael. So the two of them together were the 48% that still need the Greens to go into government. Fianna Fáil is, is unchanged and the rest are virtually unchanged. Now, how come in the last election Sinn Féin was regretting it didn't stand more candidates? Because it got a good boom. Well, surely the result, the reason is, and I'm going to give you the reason, the people of Ireland are desperate for real change, to get rid of this stupidity of the mad left green loonies, whether the farmers or anything else. And anything that will try and fix that will get elected. And Sinn Féin were operating a, a, a confidence trick, a Houdini type of thing. They were trying to keep quiet that, that there were really a mad globalist, socialist, work economic forum party and progressive uh, puberty blockers for boys, girls, uh, LBGPQ lessons for boys of four, forcing children to choose their sexuality at a young age and all of this. And they're mad for that. And that, that stands up when you look at Sinn Féin's record in all the referendums there were. So what has happened is some 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 fella or someone has called them out on this. Now I wouldn't be so uh, so, <laughs> so so big as to claim that it was a farmer with cows that actually made a YouTube video and called them out for what they are. But the hard fact is the traditional kind of working class tough man supporter, the tough guy with the thick neck on him and the and the I'm put the Brits out and all of this. Those type of traditional Sinn Féin supporters who would have also supported the IRA in their campaign. Those people have come to ask the question, what was all the death and, and destruction for? And those who killed people must now be asking, why did I spill that blood? If you're, I don't agree with spilling blood, but if you're going to spill blood, there should be a benefit for it. In the, in the War of Independence on the Collins, he saw a benefit that he had to, there had to be violence to try and get his goal. And, but he never imagined that the goal would be to give it all away to Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Somalia, Nigeria, the Congo, uh, the Seychelles, Mauritius, and all of these places, Pakistan. No, no one ever saw that. So the tough, hard Sinn Féin supporter has now seen that this is totally against him. He was hoping that there'd be more houses built. He now realises that all the houses are going to migrants. There's 84 modular houses in Clonmel alone built without plan of permission. There's a heap of them in Cabin and everything else. And he also realises this is not going to stop. When the Ukraine war is over by a Russian victory, they may be able to negotiate with Putin to let some of them back, I don't know. But there'll be a war in Gaza and they'll bring them here. And then there'll be a war somewhere else. There'll always be war in the world. And so Sinn Féin is going to always want to pack the country with migrants. And the ordinary Sinn Féin voter can count a lot better than they think. But he can count that if you keep bringing in 200,000 people a year into Ireland and providing them with everything they want, that that's the equivalent of a number to elect about four. Well, it elect 200,000. It elect 20 TDs. And it means that their children can never get anything and that the place for those people is in their own country. And this, this massive movement of people is not on. So I think the Sinn Féin vote is down. And I would say to Sinn Féin voters, if you can't bring yourself to vote for the Irish Freedom Party, the National Party, or some of the good independents, stay at home. Stay at home. Don't bother coming out. There is no obligation on you to vote, and you do not improve the country or do anything patriotic by voting unless there is a good patriotic candidate for you to vote for. Okay. Last week on Radio Television, Sheridan, Anya Lawler uh, is, a, is a presenter there, and she asked Louise Riley of, of Sinn Féin in Dublin, in the north of Dublin, Louise Riley, she's a Sinn Féin TD, nearly sure that's it, asked her the question, are you in favour of reducing the dole payments to the migrants coming in? And she refused to answer. 
So it's very important to hit all candidates on the doorstep with this question. Ask them what's the policy on migration and then him and her. Then say, will you reduce the dole? Will you reduce their, their payouts? Ask them that, yes or no. And when they won't answer, you know well that they're not going to do it, that they don't care about you at all. They're only coming to your door to get your vote. And we have only one weapon left in the fight to save our country, and that is the fact that we can, at the moment, vote. And these migrants won't be able to vote for another few years. Get the point? And we need to have legislation to stop them getting the vote. So what you can see is an effort to put in Sinn Féin forever and keep them in power by bringing in foreigners from outside. They can't persuade the Irish people to support them, so they get bringing in foreigners to do the same. And that is the stark reality of, of what's going on. And hopefully the Irish people will realise what the choices are. You vote for Sinn Féin, you are committing treachery. Simple. There's nothing to do with, oh, we'll build this and we'll build that. It's not for you. Ask them for whom. Who is it for? Right? And consider the hassle this country was put under for 30 years with violence when for nothing, when their end result was, was to fill in the country with foreigners. I don't think any warm-blooded Irish Republican or Irish freedom fighter, as they call themselves, or anything else would support that. I mean, shootings, shootings in churches, going into churches and firing at them with machine guns at the congregation. All of this was, was done, killing guards and soldiers and everything else. And Chucky our law. And Pauline Tully was going around in the last election. Now, this is not a general election coming up. It's, it's a European election. Pauline Tully was coming around, uh, uh, ooh, uh, up the ra, up the ra, up the IRA. And we have Michelle Gilder New down, and she's running in 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 uh, Ireland North North uh, West. We'll see how it does, but the vote definitely is down, and it's not a, a, a bit a wonder. We are working hard to replace it with good candidates we can depend on, and that, those are the parties I'm talking about. The, the Irish Freedom Party, that's what you look for. The, the National Party, that's what you look for. And then there's the independents, such as John Waters. And I believe this Niall Bylan's all right. Somebody commented underneath one of my videos. He's not. I don't know him. I can only say he seems to be on our side. But you're talking about your one, two, and three. You're talking about your preference vote. And uh, that's that. That's the way it is. And you're talking about what you're going to do in there. And it's up to you. It's up to Sinn Féin. Now, if anyone in Sinn Féin has an issue with what I'm saying, I am only too willing to meet you. Only too willing. And we'll correct the record if you can show that, that the issues I raise here are going to be dealt with. So I put out that invitation for Sinn Féin supporters. We'll ring you up. We'll get whatever done. I'll make a note. I will not a cheat or tell things you didn't and let's see what is there anybody out there who can rationally stand over what's happening in this country and if they do we got to do what i'm saying again we drive a wedge down through the voters who are all going to vote left let them let them off and then we're going to get entice the people to come over and vote for common sense sensible parties who will stop the madness that's going on isn't that a good enough policy you decide which side you're on now, also, a lot of people in the country do not understand about this European election, the council elections. They're completely confused. If you are familiar with the situation, will you please tell your friends and your neighbours and your relations how it works? Ireland has three constituencies, Dublin, Ireland North West and Ireland South. There's only three. I think it's 14 candidates going up. That's the European elections and it includes, Kildare is included in the North. So it includes, includes the European elections and Offaly is included in the north, but I think Leash is not. It doesn't really matter anyway. Down to Limerick. Limerick has a big population. So has Cork. Uh, so has Waterford. So there's a bigger density of populations in the south. So that's why there's a slightly smaller land area, whereas it's slightly less population in the northwest and it's a bigger land area. And then Dublin's a very dense population. So that's all very good. So let the people know that. The council elections are the local ones. There's usually three or four municipal uh, areas in each county. And that's only for the county council. Do whatever you want there. There is This is not a dull election. Okay, we let you go. It's not a dull election, it's a U e EU and uh, County Council election. Thumbs up or a thumbs down and comment on the needs. 
It's very important. Get the word out there to people about let them know what they're going to expect. Let them know the advantage of the parties that we are for. They'll be on the ballot paper. So they won't have to go scrutinising, oh, where is this Herman Kelly? Where is he there? They'll see Irish Freedom Party, and then they go across and they'll see him. They'll see the National Party, then they'll say, oh, there's him and there's him. Right, who do you want there? Vote for him. And then when it comes to the independence, there'll be non-party. That's what you're going to expect when you go in there. And get that across to people. Uh, and make sure there's no doubt about what happens. Thank you very much. Good luck. Bye.